And at the time you started in computing technology, there wasn't that excitement about what the next thing was going to be. People didn't really know why they wanted a computer. Oh, no, no, no. When we started, computers were only so expensive. They were only done, used for jobs, applications in big business, big industry, the enterprise. And nobody knew what a computer would do in the home other than we could show a few examples of playing games. But when we started Apple, though, we had a lot of other people were finally figuring out the cost to make a little tiny computer that could do a little. It was starting to become affordable to human beings. But the, our Apple II just shook the world up. Nobody thought color would ever come to a computer. All of the arcade games were black and white. And here was a computer you could buy that was, was color, and it could play games, and you could program them. The games from Atari were all hardware games. Hardware is difficult to design. Software is easy to write. All of a sudden, you had a machine that a 10-year-old, in basic programming language, could make things move on a screen in color. Oh, this was a big change in the world. But nobody knew what it was going to be used for. The, when we first introduced the computer that made our company, that was going to be our only profitable product for the first 10 years, we started with that product. It was basically a $2,000 typewriter, if we ever came out with a, a printer. And your programs were stored on cassette tapes. So the steps that a computer would take to becoming a valuable part of our life were largely influenced by Moore's Law, the cost coming down, and applications we could have never imagined in advance. The spreadsheet is the first one. VisiCalc spreadsheet changed the world because a small businessman could go in, type in a bunch of numbers for his department of, of income and expenses, month by month by month, make changes and see the results instantly. Whoa, this was magic. That was more magic than science fiction or TV shows or even Star Trek. Um, they could just, they could actually forecast their real business. Sales shot up and there was a big market for personal computers because they could do some things in the business that the mainframe could not do. The mainframes were difficult and slow to get your reports back from the internal departments. So yeah, so we didn't know when we started the company, we didn't know where would personal computers go. Obviously today is so far off. We didn't even imagine there'd ever be enough memory to hold a song. If you can you sometimes think ahead, here are the products we're making now, this year. Here's the ones we might make two years from now. Very difficult, very risky to work on things five years out because the, the desires and the fashion needs of what people want in their life might change so much and other people, other clever people in the world might think of other products that, were, that do something differently than yours or a different way or a better way. So it's very risky. So planning things that are 10, 20 years out, it's very difficult to guess where the world's gonna go. Look at the first iPhone, for example. Uh, people ask me, what is the most important product you've ever gotten in your life in technology or that Apple has made? What's the 